Today on the show, strategy plus action equals connecting, powerful coaching, and guiding the next generation. Great coaches and consultants like you have the ability to change people's lives and transform entire organizations. And your impact can often go far beyond the clients you work with. One of the reasons I love working with coaches and consultants is because of that ripple effect. This show is here to highlight your expertise and empower you with resources and new ideas to grow your business. Welcome to Strategy in Action. Terry Bean is on the show today, and we just have a fantastic conversation around, first, his coaching style, which maybe from a marketing perspective, we we both acknowledge goes against (laughs) best practices and all that. But the important thing is, it's incredibly effective. And that's where Terry shines in everything that he does because he's looked at how he gets results, whether it's networking, writing a book, coaching someone, and he goes full speed that direction on what's working, what's actually getting results for himself, for his clients. And there's so many important lessons in that. And we talked through that a little bit on on the fact that Wow, we we can make so much more progress if we go full force in a direction, get some feedback, and shift course as necessary, as opposed to kind of sitting there for months and months and, and figuring out what our move might be. And we also get into Terry's new book, Finding Harmony, soon to be released. He's got an incredibly emotional story about how this book came about. And although those circumstances aren't ideal and what he would have wished for, the results are really powerful. And uh, I'm excited for you to, to experience that, that story for yourself, uh, as well as when the book comes out, jumping in and grabbing that. All right, let's jump in. Terry Bean, welcome to the show. What's up, Jason? Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to have this conversation. Yeah, me too. This is so much fun. We just met on LinkedIn. You know, I'm sure we we say that sentence, you know, a hundred times a, a, a month right now. <laughs> As yeah. we, you know, are both deep into just finding all these great networking groups and I'm nothing but grateful for it. It's such a cool tool, man. How long, when did you first get on? How long have you been on it? Oh my gosh. Couldn't even tell you. Eight, 10 years, something, something crazy. You know, but then in the last, really just the last couple of years, you're getting really purposeful with it and, you know, making sure I'm in those groups like, you know, where, where we met so that, you know, finding those, those like-minded folks and who are just love the connection and getting to know people and share their networks. It's, it's oh, so great. It's a powerful tool, man. And you're right. You can find those people that are on that same path and have that same energy and then do amazing things because we're just so much better together. It's a cool platform for that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, you know, in Dallas, when I was still in Dallas, it was the in-person version of all that. You know, I jumped in, that's man, just, that's what gave me energy and, you know, being, being forced to figure out the, <laughs> the remote version. It's, you know, it's great because now it's global, right? Uh, so much fun. So I really appreciate you being on. This is this is a blast. And I want to dig into so much with you on, on how you're helping people and, and coaching them through things around mindset and all of these these different areas. Um, I know we have, you know, an awesome, you know, subject today on this book that you're coming out with. And I'm really excited to to dig into that. It's awesome origin story of the book as well. Um but really to talk through this idea of, you know, where you're putting your your focus of energy, intention, and then that's kind of half of things because you, you, you have to sometimes explain that or connect the dots for people. And so nice big topic there, but give us some background a little bit though, too, of how long you've been doing what you're doing and what's kind of led you to this point. Yeah, man. So, you know, you talk about networking and I got lucky. I fell into networking like in my second professional job when I was 25 years old and I was running around Columbus, Ohio, leading a handful of groups. Uh, you know, there were a sister company-ish to BNI, Business Network International, but it 
you know, started, we're talking mid nineties. So I'll go all the way and date myself the right way. And, uh, in doing that, it was great to be able to serve other people, to help them get better connected, to give referrals, to get referrals. And in all of that was cool. And then the, like the ad hoc board of directors that you get from seeing the same people over and over was really, really awesome. And then 2000 hit and I moved back to Detroit area, which is, you know, I've lived in Minneapolis, I've lived in Detroit, I've lived in Columbus, but Detroit has always kind of been home. And so when I got back here, I couldn't find a group that had the same energy. And being entrepreneurial in nature, I did whatever good entrepreneur does when they see a problem, they solve it. So I started a group called Motor City Connect, and it was really based on the in-person networking I learned in Columbus and the LinkedIn networking I was doing back in 2004, 2005 timeline. And so I took the best of both worlds, man. I took some peanut butter and some chocolate and I dipped those things together and created one of the world's first hybrid networking groups that met online and met in the real world. And so did that for a couple of years and somebody said, Hey, this group is looking for a speaker on networking and who better than you? I said, who better than me indeed? Damn it. Let's go. And so I started speaking and that led to more speaking. You want to speak more, you got to just speak and people invite you to come and talk. And after about a year and a half or two of speaking, people kept asking, how else can I use you? What other value can you provide? How can I find more benefit from you? And so that led me to offering coaching because coaching seemed like an interesting thing to do in 2008 timeline. So I was like, I'm a coach now. And I never got certified or any of those things. And I, I tell people I'm a very intuitive coach. You and I were joking before about the, if you ask 10 people, what does Terry Bean do? You'll get 10 smiles and nine different answers, right? Because I, I, I do what my client needs done. And mostly it's, I hold them here up to their face. I show them what their heart really, really wants. I give them the tools to actually activate that and make that become a reality. And then next thing you know, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe this worked. And I'm like, dude, you're a powerful creator. What can I tell you? You did it. I just was here to make sure it happened. And that's kind of what that looks like. And, and it violates all the the, the lessons we learn, right? Of and, and they're not wrong. They're not they're not wrong that we should have a system and a process and and name it and because it's hard to to send someone to you in, in traditional marketing ways. Or it's hard to market yourself, right? In traditional marketing ways, if you're like, man, here's what I do, what you just described, just the holding up the mirror. But the power is in the results. And the power I, I am guessing for you is that is that reaction that you just described somebody goes through. Awesome. Now, who do you know who <laughs> needs that same kind of result? Because they want to tell the world at that point. Yeah. And in, you know, one of my favorite case studies, I don't know that this guy will ever give me a referral because he's so system and process driven. And he's like, if you don't say you do X, Y, and Z, I don't know what to tell anybody you did. I'm like, bro. Are you kidding me? Do you remember what I did for you? Yeah, I thank you every day for it. You're like part of my prayer routine. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, maybe you could just use that. I pray for this man every single day. <laughs> if you want to find out why, call Terry B. That. <laughs> There's your commercial right there. <laughs> That's it. Isn't it amazing? So yeah, but it is a great lesson though, right? Like it, it, cause we know we, we acknowledge, right. Even though it's hard for us at times, we acknowledge that yes, you can get this result for somebody, but if, if you don't make it easy for them to refer you to find that perfect client for you, we well, just, we're shooting ourselves, you know, and we were certainly commiserating <laughs> before this call <laughs> on, you know, fighting through that a little bit, you know, <laughs> it's true. And uh, it's, it's very true. I was, I, I looked at, you know, those images where they say, if you're left brain, you'll see this. And if you're right brain, you'll see that. And I was looking at that image. I'm like, I don't see either one of these. Then you read the comment and the comment said, if you're divergent brain, you'll see this. And I'm like, 
Google's divergent brain, <laughs> like mental health, or just not a typical brain. And I'm like, well, I don't think I have mental health issues. I mean, I sure I have some, like doesn't everybody you? It's what all the cool kids are doing. But I think maybe I just have a little atypical way of thinking. And I remember taking tests back in the day that would show, are you a left brain thinker or a right brain thinker? And it, it was within 2% left or right every time I took it. I was 48% left and 52% right or 50-50. So I'm like, I'm a mid-brain thinker. Thank you very much. Exactly. No, but that, that that's the other important lesson, though, too, is like owning that fact and like, okay, well, this is great. This is unique. There's obviously a superpower in this because of the results you're getting for your for your clients, right? And for the way that you can take in, okay, what they're going through and see things in a way they can't see, partly because it's them, but also partly because you think differently, right? And so, yeah, embracing that and instead of stopping and spending the next four years getting really good at systems and I'm not going to you know, do anything else until I get good at this. I, Instead, yeah, well, maybe we'll, you'll layer in some of that stuff, but let me keep going because this is working, right? I think that's powerful. I'm a, I'm a move fast, break things, fix them on the fly kind of guy, man. Build the airplane while you're flying the airplane. And, you know, that's yeah. obviously not the speed for everybody, but the people that it's not the speed for most are the ones who most eat it. Because you it's can sit and work on perfection for way too long and never ship and get feedback to figure out where you're actually missing the boat. So just put it out there, see what happens, and then adjust. I'm a huge proponent. Oh, yeah. And I've, I'm in that, fortunately, I'm in that mode, right? And we were just talking about LinkedIn, right? I'm in that mode of, thank goodness for, you know, Carla Cherry, who, you know, you, you met very briefly before the, the call would, there, you know, I part of her it. group that, yeah. Wait, her name is that. Carla Cherry? Yes. So we yes. You could have had a show with Terry Bean and Carla Cherry going on at this exact moment. Oh, man. Are you kidding? Will he, we missed that. I, opportunity missed big time. Dang it. I did say hi, Carla. I, we, we did cover that. Yeah. I know it is recorded. Maybe we'll insert that in here real quick. <laughs> it's but being part of that 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 group, right, is is it's it's just that little bit of accountability that's forced me to show up every day, have more and more of these conversations. And yes, it's not all figured out. It's not all fleshed out in terms of, you know, every bit of my system or process, but oh my gosh, I'm light years ahead of where I was six months ago sitting around now, what do I want to do? You know, I mean, it's everything. And throughout my life, I've gone through those waves and I learned the lesson over and over again. It's always better when it's just, let's go. Let's, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to go in this direction. And it's always better than sitting there. That's all. Well, yeah. It's so much better. Like bad action beats no action every day of the week. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of action. Not bad action, but good. Action. Just, just action. <laughs> just action. Uh, let's talk about this book. I, I love this whole idea of it that you're, why you're doing it, and and where it started as well. Yeah. So it was. Uh, it wasn't actually the my favorite start, but the reality was this: my my daughter had like basically a breakdown, and I got a phone call. My wife got a phone call. One of us did at like eight o'clock in the Monday evening. And it was her boyfriend saying, I don't know what's going on. She can't speak. She's not getting words out. She sat in the middle of the grocery store on the ground crying for a half hour. I can't get her to move. I need help. So, I mean, it was devastating. We got the car. We drove two hours, 15 minutes to go get her. Um, and she was just kind of like almost in a catatonic fit when we showed up. And... She really, she finally was able to verbalize some things, but she sounded like a slow four-year-old, right? The words weren't making sense, and it was, it was just bad. Um, 
And now I recognize that she's gone through some trauma. She, she had a dude last year that she was close to literally jump off a bridge, uh, about a year ago today and he's gone. Right. Cause that's how that works. And that was very sad. And about two weeks before this particular instance, she had a roommate who overdosed on some pills in their, in their apartment. And she and the other roommate were like holding this girl while she was laying there drooped out, and it was super, super sad. So you compile, compile a couple issues like that without the right outlet. And yeah, I could see where you lose the ability to speak or get into a catatonic state yourself. And so get home, go to the hospital, do the things 24, 30 hours in the emergency room, whatever. And everything's functioning normally. So that was, that was good. Right. Didn't have a seizure or a stroke. They thought it might be epilepsy. All those things got ruled out. Um, but they were like, this is stress related. This is trauma. related. She's got some anxiety issues. So I'd already had her talking to a therapist and she loved the therapist, but didn't love therapy. And it dawned on me that I've got all this information in my head and that I share with clients about mindset and how do you level it up and how do you use stress as fuel and how do you get 1% better every week? How do you be on a path of continual improvement? And I said, you know what? I'm going to just start writing her notes. And so I'd write her what effectively was a blog post and I'd send it to her. And she'd read it and comment back what she liked or what she didn't like or what she learned. And it was a, it was a really interesting interaction. And about the 12th time I did that, I was like, this might be a good book, right? Because she's clearly not the only one in this 16 to 25 ish year age range that are having difficulty coping with the world we live in. And it's fascinating to me because that age group, they're so attuned to their emotions. They're so attuned to what they need. And they're really, they're really dialed into all of this, but they're dialed in, in the aspect of their aware of it. And instead of having an awareness and saying, I'm going to fix this, they have an awareness and say, you need to make sure you don't get in my way because of this, because I have this issue. Right? So they use it as preventative measure as opposed to having tools to make it better and coexist in society. They just say, no, nope, don't, don't bother me with that. And so, yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's yeah. That's a, that's a great take on that too, because it is a powerful next step. Right. And it's like a lot of issues, right? It's, it's constant, um, pendulum swings, right. You know, from, you know, and then finding that, that, that middle ground, but it is such a great shift in self-awareness, right? Why am I feeling this way? You know, what's going on rather than power through, you know, power through. <laughs> That's, right. Rub some dirt right. on it, you know? <laughs> right. And, and there's, a, there's a whole piece in this book called Systemic Deep Programming, where I talk about how, you know, your behavior was influenced by your parents, whose behavior was influenced by their parents, whose behavior was influenced by their parents. And at some point, you know, your parents recognize that they didn't want to be like their parents. So that pendulum swung the other way. Right. And we're, we're the opposite. There's no rub some dirt on it. It's like mommy put some dirt on it for you. Right. And, and then, so it's a whole different level of coddling than, than my parents gave me. And, you know, we thought we were doing the right thing and you don't get proof of it till two decades later when you see, oh, no, we've created total monsters, a whole different realm. And so I, I, I started thinking about, then I asked you point blank, I'm like, can we, can we make this into a book? Should we make this into a book? Would your friends find value? And she's like, yeah, total. These are things I've never learned in school. And I was like, all right, bet. I'm in, I've written a book before. I know I can write a book. That's easy enough to do. So we're in the process as we speak, I'll date this. I don't know if you normally do, but it's the 20th of December, right? It's uh 90 some percent of the way done. Uh, well, it's 90% of the way written. Done's a whole different level of whatever doneness looks. Uh, in fact, I have one more section I have to write before I can say it's done. And it's, it'll basically be a 30 day journey 
where there's just a, a topic, a series of thought starters and questions you need to ask yourself. I brought in a co-writer named Alexandra Borza, who's going to put some activities together that is going to make it almost like a journal, right? So it's going to be a very interactive book that over the next 30, 31 days or so, you'll be able to dive into deep areas of mindset. Um, and I say they're deep areas of mindset. I'm just pushing you out of the pool, right? And, and giving you the things that you need to look at. And then there'll be recommended reading where you can go dive into this a lot deeper and find actual information from really qualified people. I'm qualified to an extent, but I'm not certified in any of the stuff I'll be talking about. I've just been reading about it, listening to it, studying it, and applying it to people for two decades. What do I know, right? So, <laughs> right. But that's that's an important piece, though, too, because it sounds like it's something that's it's great for folks at all these different different stages. I know you're kind of gearing it to like an age group, but even within that, oh, I'm struggling here, I'm not struggling there, and finding that, you know, having, reading the full book and getting that awareness in areas that like, oh, I do pretty good at this. That's a good thing to know, you know, whereas we get to this thing like, I don't know how I'm still functioning because I'm dealing with this. And now to have that deep dive, that's great. I mean, that's that, that's huge. But just that launching off point too. And something you said to me, you know, when we were talking before pressing record that, was really fascinating is that you you described how you you modeled this way of thinking in so many of these things like you just described right two decades of experience and learning and going through this but you re that realization you had about that like i've modeled it but i have there's there's still a, a missing piece Will you kind of explain that to, to to folks yeah man and that was that it you know because anytime your kid goes through something that's not like clear cause and effect, right? Her knee is scraped because she fell off a skateboard and I watched her get on the skateboard. You know, as a parent, you're like, well, damn it, I probably shouldn't have bought the skateboard, right? You're always going to take some level of responsibility for what your kid goes through. If, if it's within the realm of possibility, you're going to own it for your child because that's how parents are these days. Um, but what I realized was, yeah, I'd been doing all of these things, but I never really stopped to explain why they matter, right? What the relevance was, why do I think this way? Why do I approach things this way in really connecting the dots for her? So it was uber clear. Not only is it important to think this way or level up your mindset, but here's the reasons why it's important. So putting this down on paper in really articulating it in as clear a fashion as I can will will hopefully add value. It's added value to her. Hopefully it adds value to men. You know, you set out a time, a, an age range, right? 16 to 24, 25. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll have positive impact on people significantly older than that too. Oh, big time. Because we just all need it. You know, it's one of those areas that I'm fascinated by, I love digging in, learning, consuming all of this stuff, but so many people don't. And if you don't love it, it's not like you're hit with it. Just like your, your daughter said, she didn't learn this in school, right? She didn't learn any of this stuff. And, and what, what you're, you're describing there is really interesting because it is so critical and we hear about the importance of modeling right? They're going to, they are going to take in what you do and who you are way more than, you know, what you tell them or, you know, you should do that, you know, of course. But it's so interesting to get to, to think about that opposite side of things of still con connecting those dots a little bit. And, and we can connect them, you know, in the moment if something triggers us and it, it kind of forces a conflict or something that we can stop and go, okay, here's why I reacted that way, you know, but it's, it's harder to know in the moment when you don't react, but the only reason you don't react negatively is because in the back of, you've been doing this so long in the back of your mind, you understand that, you know, you could take this in, reframe the situation and do that. It's tough in that moment to go, 
Hey, you know um, how I didn't scream at that car? <laughs> right. You no. Know? Here's why I didn't scream at that car. That's right. You know, and it's funny you use that example. There was, there's a light at the far, far end of our street. And that we had to drive through every day when she was in second or third grade. We had just moved into this house. And so that light was brand new. We moved in over summer. And the light allows for three people to turn left before it turns to green and everybody is a free for all. And every day I'd get there and I'd sit through this dang light and I would just be like enraged. And I finally said to her about six or seven weeks into it, my goal by the end of this school year is to not let this light bother me anymore, right? Because the light's not going to change. Only I can change, right? And so the recurring theme is you only have the power to how you respond, right? That's where your control lives, period, end of story, right? So how do we figure out how to respond better? You know, and that's... Yeah, but, that's but, but that is an empowering thing when you let that in because you are in control of that. And like when you can let that sink in and that takes somebody from, you know, everything is somebody else's fault and this needs to change and that needs to change. That's not power. Like you have zero control over that. So of course your life is going to feel like it's complete whirlwind, right? That you have no control of when you can take that back doesn't mean it's easy, but when you can take that back and learn those skills over time to reframe all of this into, ah, well, you know what? Why is that? You know, you go back to the, to the systemic, you know, like you learn this and this and this. We have so many of those things that when we do start looking at it, like, why does that make me mad? I can't even remember. Like, I'm always mad at this thing. I, I actually don't care that much. That's it. Hey, that's, that's, that's a relief, you know? That's it, man. It was like, uh, you know, my wife, we ran out of corn, you know, a few years ago. And she's like, well, we're having green beans. Ew, green beans, those are gross. And you eat some green beans, you're like, those are pretty good. Why, is, why, why have I spent 20 years avoiding these things? They're pretty good, you know? Because your mom made you eat them when you were seven and you didn't want them. That's why. Like, stop hanging on to things that no longer matter and no longer serve you. Oh, yeah. And again, we, you know, it, it doesn't mean it's easy, but what a powerful first step when you start going through things. I'm sure that you take people through and just that line of questioning, finding somebody to hold up that mirror that, you know, all your friends you've had for 20 years, they're not questioning your green bean taste. That's just who you are. You don't like green beans. Cool. Right. But it takes a Terry to go. <clears throat> so what, why exactly do you, <laughs> are you so story. angry at these green beans? <laughs> right. Why is that? Like, let's, let's, let's talk about this for a second, you know, and, and finding those things in your life that, yeah, maybe it's, it seems small and trivial, but it opens up this, this whole entire path and this journey of, oh, I've been running my business this way really just because, and I, I had never really made a decision and it, and let in the fact that, oh, I could do this, this, and this. Everybody's happier, better client. You know, I mean, there's all those examples like that. That's it. Man. That's it. And it's just, it's, it's the questioning, the listening, the sitting and the being patient and present until they like, they, cause if you ask the right question, the answer comes. Right. And regardless of whether or not you like the answer, that's a whole different conversation. But the answer is going to show itself. And you're going to have to make some decisions at that point. Do I, am I happy with where I am? No. Right. I wouldn't be talking to you if I was. So, how do we jump a gap to get you from where you were to over here? Because it's really nice over here. The water's fine. Right. The sun is shining. And it's lovely here. So come on, let's go. And it's, it's kind of fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not excited about why this project, this book project exists. Um, but I will sure. say, uh, you know, we're probably, we're probably eight or nine weeks from that, that event. And so I, I, I will be excited that I, and I am excited that the progress she's made in that time. Right. And, and where she was to where she is now, 
then, you know, it was probably four weeks before she could actually see progress. It was about two and a half before I could see it, you know, and it's funny because we don't, you know, we're always so self-critical. Um, so the ability to, to actually watch her continue to grow back, it's been, it's been amazing. It really has. Oh uh, yeah. That's powerful. And to have that direct effect as a parent, to be able to just help, you know, help in terms of direct there, getting them the right resources, any of that, that's, that's everything because we do, we, you know, we do take on, they're going through something. Okay. What happens, right? Like we, we need to find that cause and figure it out and, and solution if there ever is one, you know, but to be able to, to do that project and then, you know, do the, provide the good in the world that it's going to provide, you know, at this, at this bigger scale, I think it's, I think that's just amazing. Yeah, I'm, 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 you can tell I'm fixed, right? I, I am, I, I find, I find great joy in the idea of doing this and bringing it to the world. Um, and you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to talk about legacy on that or anything, but would be kind of cool if it has the kind of impact I can see it. Yeah, absolutely. So both, both things here, where can people go to learn more about the book and, and all of that and folks who who need Terry, like what, who is that person and what are they experiencing? And to, to just go, I need Terry Bean today. I need some <laughs> Terry Bean. Bean me up. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I've tried to make it really, really easy to, to find me. So my website is try Bean, T-R-Y. So missing the E and the R out of my name, Bean, B-E-A-N dot com. Right. And you can learn about some of the presentations I give and the coaching I do. And, you know, I occasionally work on some consulting projects, but those always seem like work to me. The rest of the stuff seems like fun. Uh, so there's a lot of information there. And then as far as the book goes, uh, we were joking about the idea of being system and process averse. I know that I've got to put up a sign up form. So I am going to have at trybeing.com slash finding harmony. You know, so if you go to trybeing.com slash finding harmony, there'll be some information on the book, a little bit of talk, uh, a conversation about it. I've done some Facebook live videos. Maybe I'll put those on the sheet so you can see what's going on. I've got a really cool spreadsheet with each of the titles. Maybe I'll slap that up there so you people can see what kind of ride they're going to go on. And then there'll be a sign up form for when the book comes out. You can get the little email notification that says, hey, the book is out. We're ready. Let's go. So trybeing.com and trybeing.com slash finding harmony. So that's where people can go. And then as you and I met on LinkedIn, I'm a very big advocate there. So linkedin.com slash in slash Terry Bean. Just find the Terry Bean in Detroit. There's a Terry Bean out of Oregon. I am not him. Bad dude. Bad, bad. Don't <laughs> use my name like that. <laughs> I love it. It's some cool Terry, thank you so much for being on. Pleasure, man. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. If you want help creating authority building video content or even a client generating show of your own, go to medialeadsco.com and let's connect. I'll talk to you soon on the next Strategy and Action.